Hi, I'm Steve Purcell from M60 Media. It's December, almost Christmas, so it's time to discuss depth of field, bokeh, and how to achieve this blurry background in your videos and photographs. So how do we create this blurry background? Well, there's a little bit of science involved. And the first part of that science is understanding depth of field. Well, understanding depth of field is one of the first big hurdles in photography and videography. Knowing how your aperture, focal length and focusing all work together to affect the depth of field and control what appears sharp in the images. Well, once you understand this, it will give you incredible confidence in all the photographs and videos you take. A camera can only focus its lens at a single point but there will be an area that stretches in front of and behind this focus point that will still appear sharp. This zone is known as the depth of field. It's not a fixed distance, it changes in size and it can be described as either shallow, where only a narrow zone appears sharp, or deep, where more of the picture appears sharp. Because depth of field has an impact on both the aesthetic and technical quality of a picture, sometimes you'll want to use an extensive depth of field in order to keep everything sharp. A classic example is when you're taking a picture of a landscape where generally the most desirable outcome is to capture detail from the foreground all the way to the background. Other times, a shallow depth of field would be preferable. It enables you to blur the background and foreground details, causing distractions to melt away and allowing you to direct the viewer's focal point to where you want it to be looking. So what is aperture? Simply put, aperture is a hole within a lens through which light travels into the camera body. It is easier to understand the concept if you think about our eyes. Every camera that we know of today is designed like the human eye. The cornea in our eyes is like the front element of a lens. It gathers all external light, then bends it and passes it to the iris. Depending on the amount of light, the iris can either expand or shrink, controlling the size of the pupil. The pupil is essentially what we refer to as aperture in photography. The amount of light that enters the retina, which works just like a camera sensor, is limited to the size of the pupil. The larger the pupil, the more light that enters the retina. So the easiest way to remember aperture is by associating it with our pupil. Large pupil size equals large aperture, while small pupil size equals small aperture. So, what is bokeh? Well, it's one of the most popular subjects in photography. The reason why it's so popular is because bokeh makes photographs visually appealing. It forces us to focus our attention on a particular area of an image. The word comes from the Japanese language and it literally translates to blur. Bokeh is the quality of out of focus or blurry parts in the image. It's not the blur itself or the amount of blur in the foreground or background of a subject. The blur that you are so used to seeing in photography that separates the subject from the background is the result of shallow depth of field and is generally simply called background blur. The quality and feel of the background foreground blur and reflected points of light, however, is what photographers call bokeh. Bokeh is rendered by the lens, not the camera. Different lenses render bokeh differently due to the unique optical designs. Generally portrait and telephoto lenses with large, ma large maximum apertures yield more pleasant looking bokeh than cheaper consumer zoom lenses. The shape of the reflected light in the outer focus areas depends on the lens diaphragm. Many older lenses have seven straight blades in their diaphragms. This results in a heptagon shaped bokeh. Most newer lenses, however, have nine rounded blades, which render round bokeh. So that's the theory. Now it's time for the practice. You're thinking to yourself, you need to go out and spend vast amounts of money on a new lens. Well, you don't really. I shoot Canon and Canon offer the 50 mm 1.8 lens at less than hundred pound. That's about 125 US dollars for that kind of price, you're going to get fantastic results. I imagine Nikon do something very similar. So we need just three things to create this bokeh background. The first thing is a low aperture, 2.8, 1.8, 1.4. Then it's distance, the distance between the camera and the subject, and the subject and the background. And the third thing we need is a light point. We're using the Christmas tree in the background for the light points. And it's as easy as that. You'll see if I step out of the frame that the lights on the Christmas tree will lose their bokeh effect as the camera focuses further back. I 
And as I come back into the frame, the bulkhead is there again. It really is a simple task. So that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't already, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.